Hello, figuring out this goodness. Okay. I think this is working. Hi, I'm just figuring out how to share this with Jerry. She'll be attending in a second. Hello, everybody. I think she's just joining now. It's a lot easier than I thought it would be. I'm new with technology. <laughs> Let's see. I can just add her, that'd be great. There you are, how do I make you my co-host? Okay, here we go. Oh, uh, no, maybe not. Bear with me, I'm not good with technology. <laughs> Okay, which one do I click? Well, hello, happy Saturday. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just waiting for Jerry so I can add her. Where are you? Let's look for... Yeah, we'll do the re reflections in a minute. Oh, all the nice waves. Hello, everyone. By the way, I'm Tiffany. I'm just going to start with that for anyone who's already joined. And we'll get started in about a minute. As you can see, I have a lot of fun things behind me, a lot of stuffed animals. That's just kind of my vibe. You'll get that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the hearts. Okay, let's figure this out. I'm probably just going to message her. Uh-huh. Good afternoon, everybody. We'll get started in a few. Oh no, it's buffering. That's not cool. Let me plug my phone in. Sometimes the power of technology is giving it more power, right? Okay. Oop. Here we go. Jerry's about to join. Okay. I Hi. Think... Hi. We've done it. We did it. Technology is great. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm not sure if all of you see Jerry in a tiny screen or us divided, but either way, we're both here. <laughs> oh, thank you for the compliment, Digital Dust. I appreciate you. All right, so, okay. Well, um, we have about 17 people here. Let's wait another couple minutes. Yep. Thank and you for I the outfits, good. yeah. <laughs> the compliments, not the outfits. <laughs> yeah. Are you getting a lag on the um, sound? I'm not getting a lag. Are you getting a lag to me? I'm getting a lag on myself, which is the worst. Oh no. And you. <laughs> let me let I... me try again to see if the connection Yeah, no, goes go ahead. Better. Try Hold again. On. We'll try again. Popping off just for a sec. Yep. Okay, we're going to try this again. <laughs> and I'm going to do it like this. I think if I send the invite Oh, thank you. It's actually a strawberry dress. It's a full dress. Uh, not to advertise, but my friend's brand is Miss Candy Holic. Please check it out. She's a really cool person. And it's just like a strawberry dress. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Okay, so testing. Testing? Oh, you sound great to me. That's way better now. Okay, good. Anybody yeah, else still pausing? Am I still pausing or is the whole stream pausing? No, no, everything's good on my end. So Now it looks like Jennifer and Nicole says uh, theirs is still pausing. Oh, oh no. It happens. Sometimes it takes yeah. us a minute to get it all sorted. So never fear. Yeah. My internet is very good. Trust me. I play video games. <laughs> it's <laughs> always very so. good. <laughs> all right. Well, you're okay now. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we're going to wait just a sec. Let, let me start with our um, lighting of our candle. 
um, because we do that to start just to, um, you know, uh, honor those in our community who have suffered, who um, have died, who are sick. Um, We always start with a lighting of the candle and a moment of silence so that we can just honor that and the history um, that we walk in currently. So let me light this. Okay, that was weird. It kind of lit, like halfway lit for a second. I was like, oh, be careful. There we go. Fire. Fire. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is our candle. Candle has been lit. Uh, we will take a minute and we're going to uh, have a moment of silence and then we will have our discussion. Okay, so here we go. Okay, thank you very much. And I keep this lit while we talk. Just behind me. All right. Here we go. Well, um, I would like to welcome today Tiffany. We uh, Tiffany is a new staff member. Um, we are super excited to have Tiffany with us. Uh, she is the head of content creation and um, uh, helped us rewrite our tenants, which I'm very, very accepted, uh, accepted. I'm very, very excited about. And I figured we would spend today just getting to know Tiffany and um, just asking some fun little questions that I found on the internet. And um, you all can ask questions as well. And we'll just get to know each other a little bit. So how does that sound? Sounds great to me. Great. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about you um, so we can get to know you a little bit and then I can ask some fun questions. Sounds good. Uh, So the basics about me, my name is Tiffany. Um, I'm from New York, from uh, specifically the Long Island and New York City area. Um, So if I have an accent, that's why. Uh, I'm currently living in Tennessee. Um, For my profession, I'm a clinical laboratory scientist. Um, so I do all the cool stuff with your blood and all that <laughs> and help out in the laboratory. And uh, I also am a writer. Uh, I normally don't get paid to write. I just tend to be the person people come to when they'd like something <laughs> written. So it's like my little superpower that usually is just, you know, it's one of those things we all got one of those where, you know, I don't get paid for it, but I love doing it. And so that's kind of why, how I came on board. Um, obviously, my past fashions or fashion if you've seen any of the <laughs> videos i wear japanese lolita fashion as well as well as just general cute fashion um and that's just something i've been really passionate about um other than that um yeah uh i'm also pregnant so i'm hoping i'm welcoming a welcoming a little boy into the world and you know and ho- i'm really excited to uh have a community for you know them to really you know be a part of and learn about and be accepted for whoever they are and they become when they get older. So that's one of the big things that's happening in my life. And other than that, um, I have two cats. That's important. <laughs> and they're beautiful. <laughs> Their names are Kiki and Maya and I love them so much. And I also have a husband, but you know, cats priority, right? <laughs> that's good. That's have priorities here. <laughs> top. And thank top you for billing. the congratulations. Cats get top billing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So you work in a lab, so you do all the lab kind of things. Yeah. Uh, you you love your job? Is that is this something, or is it just like okay, this is what I do to pay the bills, or you go skipping <laughs> off to work? Fifty. Yeah, it's you- a little bit of each. Sure. Yeah. I went to school for it. I went to college for it, and I really I do have a passion for helping people and medically, but I don't like touching patients uh, when they're sick. I feel terrified, and I feel like I get you know too emotional with them. So it's kind of cool being in a laboratory and not seeing them directly and still helping. But um, yeah, I like it. But I think I'm at a point in my life where like career is not the priority anymore. Maybe like my priority is actually spending time with people I love and not working three jobs. So <laughs> none of yeah. that anymore. That's yeah. that's important. Yay. Well, that's cool. Um, anything else you want to look? Why did you join the church? Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Uh, so w- one of the reasons why I joined the church, actually, um, I know at one point someone was looking for more BIPOC people, but, you know, um, 
uh, Black, Indigenous, and people of color to be a part of it because we really want to be a diverse group. And sometimes you have that moment where you're like, well, why not me? You know, why am I always waiting for someone else to step up? And I'm, you know, and just taking a backseat. So I said, well, I can at least help write. And so uh, I think I reached out and they pointed me in the direction, direction of you, uh, Jerry. And you were like, hey, can you write the seven tenants? And like, you know, no expectations. We're just like, okay, can we rewrite these and, you know, make them suit where our direction is headed now? And, and then that, that kind of just sparked me saying, okay, well, I can actually do this and really good at it. And I got really positive feedback. So it's really nice when you get positive feedback for your true passion, which is like your non-paid profession. So yeah, writing is, is the true passion there. Yeah. That's awesome. So what are you hoping, so, like, if you were to envision, okay, you know, dreams come true and uh, the church is super successful. What does that look like to you? I think it looks like us being able to help people, um, you know, whatever they're going through, uh, not just legally, but in general, you know, them feeling like there's a place for them, you know, which I believe we're already doing that, but, you know, on a larger scale where we're, you know, recognized in a way that you say, oh, you know, I'm a member of the prismatic church, prismatic light church, and it's not just, you know, okay, what's that, you know, so I really wanted to be like, you know, recognize well, and, and people understand where we're coming from. And possibly if we can get to a point where like LGBTQIA rights are just considered the standard, it's not, we're doing this as an extra thing. If we could kind of get to that point, um, you know, cause it's, it's a community too. Like we're, we're a really strong community, but we're also here to make sure that, you know, human rights, it's important to all of us. So mm -hmm. both of them, you know, and if we could do a combination of the two and continue with the community we're growing, I'd be really happy. Yeah. You're still there, Jerry? <laughs> I think you muted. You're there. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, did I take have a yeah, that terrible sorry, my... answer? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. I know. Oh, like someone's said something about alarm. recovering as a Christian. Yeah, go ahead. What'd you say? My stupid alarm set me off. Oh, it's freezing and muting. Yeah, go ahead and I'll add one more thing uh, while you're fixing that. Um, so one okay. thing I just saw, um, Joe mentioned about the, uh, you know, recovering Christian. So I grew up, oh, she'll, co she'll come back. Okay, I'll, I'll finish my little rant. Um, I grew up uh, in a Baptist and Pentecostal church. My parents are, one is Baptist and one is Pentecostal. And it was always to fight which, you know, religion's better, which church is better. And there was things in there that I really liked. I liked the whole, you know, community in there. I liked um, people you know, bonding together. But what was missing for me was, you know, the I, I don't really want shame, you know, I don't want to come in every Sunday and feel shame and feel bad about myself for just being the human that I am, you know, and so that was the piece of why, you know, typical standardized religion as it's been in the past didn't work for me. But you know, I, d I do happen to be someone who believes in a higher power, which you can do along with being part of this church, you don't have to, you know, be one or the other, you can be as part of whatever works for you and that's another reason why I like this church but uh for me it was there's a lot of trauma um you know going to most churches and I hope that we can create an environment where people don't feel that way yeah I was pretty much just explaining what I just said if you missed most of that church. no I got I got some of it sorry I had to yeah. pop out and fix it but um it should be it should be good now um good yeah I mean that is something I talked about last either last week or a couple of days ago that like you know, the fact that the, the, truthfully religion is not just a belief system, but a culture that we bring with us. And a lot of folks have a real hard time. Um, you know, they, they want to be a part of something new and progressive like this, but yet their whole culture has been wrapped up in this, uh, in, in their religion um, and maybe the belief system doesn't line up the same but their culture does and that's yeah. why it was super important to me that people could be both they didn't have to choose because um, you know I mean I know uh, I lived in a nation that was predominantly Muslim and that was a lot of things uh, that the ladies that I would um that, that I worked with that they really struggled with is that they liked the idea of Christianity, but their 
whole life, their village, their support system, everything was 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 Muslim. Um, and they had a real hard time because they were being asked to give one up. Um, and I hope that that's not what this is going to be. This is something where you can have that culture and still have this belief system that, you know, uh, lines up more with maybe what you truly believe. Um, so, yeah. So that was kind of like it. Yeah. It's just one of those things that's super important that you know people are always a little like, what, I can be Muslim and, and be this too? I'm like, yep. Can I be a witch and be this too? I'm like, yep. Absolutely. <laughs> you could be a Muslim witch and be this if you want, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Yeah, I think um, we had a question from sure. Discord. Let me scroll to that. Uh, it says from Discord, I saw you have a system in your roles on the server. That's really cool. What tips for systems you can give to follow the prismatic faith in your opinion? Ooh, hmm. That's that one's hard only because I am not a I am not a system, but um, we did want to be a safe space for systems, and that's why we set up the Discord the way that we did. Um, so uh, definitely, you know, we want you to be your healthiest version of you, whatever that looks like. Uh, that if you go to therapy, if you choose not to go to therapy, if you uh, see a doctor or a holistic care person or you don't see anybody, um, that whatever that looks like to you, that we want to support you in that as long as it's, you know, um, you're, you're trying to be the healthiest version of you that you can be. Some people are like, well, vegan is the best for me. That's great. We support your veganism. Um, but some people may be like, I like meat or I like sugar or whatever works. So I think when it comes to being a system, you know, I'm not a system, but um, you being uh, every day waking up and going, I'm going to be the best version of me that I can be today is is what I would get behind 100 percent. Yeah, so. I agree. I do happen to be you know, part of it. Um, I, I'm, I'm still unfamiliar with exactly what systems entails, but I'll just give a general like a depression, PTSD, anxiety. I also have like really uh, challenging dyslexia, things like that. And like, oh, you know, ADHD things, you know, oh. and uh, I think part of it is like really accepting like these are part of me and it's not something, oh, I am Tiffany and I have this horrible thing about me that I'm trying to suppress and not talk about. No, you should be able to talk about it for sure. And that's why we have the community. That's why we really tried to separate it so people can talk about how they feel. I think for part of being in the Discord uh, and part of being in our community is really, uh, if you see something that, you know, you with your identity, it doesn't resonate, there's a problem, please bring it up to us. Let us know. Like uh, other people were saying, hey, you know, we don't have an anxiety uh, channel on Discord. You know, we don't have this on, and then we actually did. The mods are really great. They're an amazing team, you know, and they're able to add things or, or maybe you had an uncomfortable interaction. You can talk to somebody, you know, talk to one of the mods and say, hey, look, you know, what, what was I viewing here? You know, there's, there's so many different things, you know, and so it's really part of being part of this community is being trying to be a little more comfortable with letting someone know if something goes wrong and then also being comfortable knowing that we accept you for you not despite any of your disabilities or anything else like that it's you as a whole you know and that's a really big one yeah i mean someone's saying that they're not on the discord i get it i am 50 years old y'all um i am one of the oldest people on the discord if i can learn the discords um then uh, anyone can. I highly recommend it because they're really there's channels for everything. Um, uh, again, uh, custom wood. We would love it if you'd reach out and explain the situation because I um, I remember last week you mentioned that and um, uh, just not on your channel. Well, you should come out and look um, for our channel because uh, we've got lots of things going on there. Even um, last week we had game not a game night last week. We can't do that today, but um, hopefully next week maybe because we all played Jackbox games. It was super fun. So you know, having that community, like you said, is 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 something that's super important um, for everybody. So yeah, um, awesome. Is there any other questions before I actually ask a question? <laughs> 
I think we're okay for the moment. Go ahead, ask me another question. If we get another one, we'll pop All in. Right. So Cherry's been sending them to us too. Cool. Uh, what do people misunderstand about you the most? Oh, that's a good one. And I get to get in a little bit of a racial conversation and get comfortable with racial conversations for people who aren't. It's not a bad thing. So uh, part of being Black is the misunderstanding of what Black is. In my head, I'm literally just Tiffany, and this is the way I was born. And so a lot of times people view me and they say, okay, I'm six foot tall. That's another thing. They view me as I'm going to be, yeah, I'm a tall bean, right? (laughs) Um, They view me as I might be a little aggressive or I might be a little, you know, something like that or any of the general stereotypes and usually Mm. not the positive ones. You know, I'm not good at basketball. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm not good at sports. And it's okay to laugh about little things like that. That's funny. But one of the things is that I get the aggression thing. People assume that I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be tall. I'm, I'm in their face. And actually, I'm just like this little goofball who liked anime way too much as a kid and decided to like allow that to be part of my identity as a 35-year-old almost. You know, and that's just who I am. And so one of the misunderstandings is, um, is dealing with that. But it's actually not a terrible thing when you know what it is because it's the same thing in the queer community. You know, someone looks at you and you're visibly queer. You know, they just say, okay, well, oh, you're going to, you're going to preach to me about something I don't like. You're going to go on about, you know, pronouns. And they don't understand that everybody has pronouns for the most part. You know, like things like that. They just misunderstand. And so it's actually not a terrible thing to understand, but to know what people might misinterpret about you. And it's a really good, powerful tool because I know someone might come at me and say, oh, well, she's going to be aggressive. And I get to get them like with the nicest kindness and I get to be my weird little self and make them love me just a little bit. And so I've kind of enjoyed fighting against that, even though when I was a kid, I did not enjoy it. So that's a thing. Yeah. My, my husband is six foot six. So we get a lot of the, uh, (laughs) you you know, how's the weather up there and do you play basketball? And no, he's also, he doesn't do any of those. Um, so. <laughs> I especially get that from uh, little old ladies in the bathroom like oh you're so tall you know but the cool thing is I get to watch you struggle getting the thing high up and then I get to help you and feel a little good about myself so I will watch you struggle for half a second and then I will always <laughs> offer help it's my one little pleasure as a tall person <laughs> well and I'm sure as a like uh, when you were younger a, fem- a tall female that's got to be you know uh, female by uh, from birth it's got to be a little challenging or at least it was just because you feel like you should be this you know tiny demure you know all the stereotypes of what we think uh, attra- attractive might be um, I'm loving this generation for like breaking all those barriers right just like pushing down those things and going you know what Gender is a social construct. Attraction is what you make it. Beauty is what defines you on the inside. They're like yeah. literally changing the gener- the the definitions of everything that we were all taught. And I'm loving it. Loving it. That's great. Yeah, I see Brittany's question real quick. Um, sure. Yeah, I actually do get kids, especially when I go to the mall. You know, I'm just going to Hot Topic like my old self enjoying that and they're like oh I love your outfit you look so cool or no young people say I love your fit which I had to learn wasn't the fit of my outfit it was just (laughs) outfit (laughs) you know they say cute things like that and then I usually they're usually also dressed cool and I compliment them and they're like oh my goodness someone that cool complimented me and I'm just thinking I never thought I would ever be cool in my life I still don't think I'm cool I'm a weird person but it's a good weird and I enjoy it so it's kind of cool yeah and my car, by the way, has eyelashes on the front. You can buy eyelashes for your car. That's amazing. I <laughs> yeah. love it. I love it. I thought you'd like it. Um, okay. So, oh, uh, what, um, what is the greatest compliment you were ever given? Oh, that's a good one. I had a few of them, but... Uh, I'm going to give you two. One of them more recently because it's, it's really fun. And then the other one, like, I guess the big compliment. So the, the, the more recent one is when I submitted um, The Seven Tenants, uh, the rewrite, and such a positive feedback from so many people. And even still continued now on, on the TikTok, people just like, you know, it's really interesting how something you take the time not to and create and write and people really like it. 
uh, since writing is my passion. I'm like, oh, for once somebody, you know, likes my writing. And of course, people along the way have liked my writing. I've written other things, you know, I've written essays, things like that. But like, it's a little different when you get it from a community and not like an academic advisor, you know, that's kind of stale, you know, so it's like from real people, they actually like it, you know, they're not getting paid to like my essay, (laughs) you know, (laughs) so that's one. And um, in general, like one of the other ones, and I get it actually pretty often, when I'm in the street and, you know, I see a little kid and, you know, whatever. And they're like, oh, I like your outfit. Or I usually get like, you look like a princess. And the reason why that's so important is because growing up, I never knew that I was allowed to be a princess, which is why representation matters because hmm. princesses don't look like me. Princesses aren't tall. They're not black. They don't have, you know, short, really curly, fun hair, you know. Um, and I mean, now things are changing and we're getting more inclusivity when it comes to that. But I thought I was never allowed to be a princess. And I never thought, even if there was a black Barbie, I never knew that, like, that's a pretty Barbie, too. It's not, we're just not, you know, I thought they were just making it for me so I can feel okay with it. It's like, no, it's actually pretty. It's not just a way to get my money, you know. So that's a really big thing. I love when they call me a princess. And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> so that's it's happened a few awesome. times. <laughs> All right. On the, on the um, flip side is what's... What's an insult you've received that you're proud of? Oh, and if, if any, maybe, maybe none, maybe, you know. I've definitely but... got insults. It's fine. That's part of life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's you fine. Know, you might not, but like, yeah, that you're proud of, that you're like, okay. Um, I think it's like insults when I was a kid. And then I later was just like, whatever, you know? So I think like, you know, in general, a lot of more on the, you know, being not cool or not accepted and not pretty for being black or being tall or in particular being a nerd and liking nerdy things I'm gonna go on that one uh for now and Mm. it was like oh you're you like anime you like you're weird you know no one you know it was like the no one's gonna like you because you have this hobby that you are obvious about and now I'm just like, no, that's one of the coolest things about me. I like spent time to learn Japanese. I'm not very good at it, but I know some, you know, I, uh, you know, it made me have a, such a huge like source of friendships. I have communities of people who also wear, I wear Gothic Lolita. They also wear the same fashion. You know, it's one of the coolest things about me that I'm a little weirdo. And so I don't consider it to be a, an insult. It's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm a little different. You know, like I, I'm not, you know, it's like someone calling me queer. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so you Own, know, owning like, it you know cool. owning yeah, it so. I, my, my family were all a bunch of little weird weird kids um all of us theater nerd cosplay uh my youngest is really into anime um you probably could have like a you know hours and hours long conversation um but yeah just being able to own it and going that that is it if you think that's going to insult me, you literally just described me. So why is that? Why, why is that a, a bad thing? How would your family and friends describe you? Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, okay. So for family, they also think I'm weird, but charmingly so thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> Same good. with my husband. <laughs> like, oh yeah, Tiffany, she's doing her anime thing again. Um, you know, that's the, anything I do is considered anime, even if it's not. They, even this is anime to my family. It's funny. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think they're just like, yeah, she's doing that thing. Um, and friends, I think um, since it tends to be like, you know, friendships tend to be the relationships where you have a lot more give and take. Family's kind of structured and you end up holding roles. But with friendships, I'm usually the very nurturing friend. You have a thing, two o'clock in the morning and you need me. All right, I'm driving two hours to you you know, what do you need? Um, I used to be the, you know, the person that people would ask me to pick them up after going to the bar and drinking more than they should have, um, you know, of age, of course. Um, Things like that, you know, like I would be the person, the the mom, the mom of the group. And I still am definitely the mom of the group, although I have a friend who's the mom of your mom. And so sometimes she, you know, I come to her for that. So it's really interesting having those dynamics. Friendships are really important. I'm just like adding this little tag on friendships are relationships and treat them as such because they're really important and you need your community. And, you know, people kind of forget that, you know, they get into a romantic relationship and they forget about their friends. Friendships are also relationships, even if you don't have as much time for them. So that's my little tag on on that. Honestly. Yes. I, um, I've actually been 
friends with the same little group of friends since I was 11. Um, oh. Kevin, Amy, Tommy, Becky, Michelle, and I have all been friends since sixth grade. And it's funny, my oldest is actually marrying Becky's oldest son. So we're, oh, having, wow. we're having a marriage in the group. Um, which I is funny, it. when they first started dating, everybody was like, how's it going? We're too afraid to, we're too afraid to get excited, but how's it going? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. They, they came back. They seem happy. They're going to go on another date. And everyone's like, yay. So <laughs> now that they're yeah, I actually... love in-group gossiping when it's positive. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everybody right. is super excited. You know, there's going to be a wedding. So, um, yeah. but yeah, no friends, friends are, they are definitely, I mean, we, we kind of, friends become family on some level, you know, you start to kind of intertwine, you know, and that community becomes so important. Um, like you said, you know, it's not just the romantic, you, you kind of need all of that. You need, you need the people that will tease you when you've made a dumb mistake, you know, and never quite let you forget it. Um, but in a loving way, <laughs> you know, yeah. keep you humble. Yeah, definitely a loving way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, What's a funny story your family tells about you? Oh my goodness. Speaking There's too of many. Um, so an interesting one, and I'm going to tag that on to like another thought. Um, so when I was a kid, uh, I don't know, I was, I was very, they consider it to be an emotional kid. Now I know I'm just me. I'm not too emotional. But sure. at the time, you know, little things would bother me. And so like, they would like say boo, like in a very like chill way, like the way I just said it. And I would start crying. So they all kind of like laugh about that. They're like, oh, Tiffany is so sensitive. But the cool thing about that is now as like we've gotten older and everything like that, they understand and I understand that my sensitivity is actually my strength. I'm very good at like knowing someone's emotions in advance, which might be a part of trauma, but that's a totally different thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, but <laughs> right. I mean, everything is trauma Same. response, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good one at least. And it really helps me even on like a job situation because I can see like tensions rising and I'm usually good at like, you know, finding the right thing to say and knowing who's feeling what in advance. So, you know, sometimes your little thing becomes like a superpower. I forgot the point of the question, but that was, they used to make fun of me for that, but now they mm. celebrate me for it. So I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, again, like this whole generation uh, that is, you know, at one point I said something dumb, you know, when my kids first came out, I mean, I was supportive. I've always been supportive, yeah. but they're supportive. And then you just ask or think my stupid way of thinking, um, not want to say stupid, uh, just ignorant, um, hmm. not, not knowing and just saying dumb things. Like, what did I say? Um, oh, uh, I said to one of my kids because I have three queer kids and one of them I said something like well don't you want to start dating before you know you decide on oh it must have been my trans child because uh, I said don't you want to start dating first before you and and he goes what does attraction have to do with gender and I was like mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta sit with yourself for a sec. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> like, you know, like right? I'm learning, learning as we go, right? But this generation to be able to just kind of go, yeah, what does it have to do with gender? I guess nothing yeah. now that I think about it. Yeah, you know, learning, learning every day. They're so accepting. Yeah, they, they accept themselves and others. And that's the cool thing. Because like my generation, we finally started to maybe accept ourselves like reluctantly. But we weren't really accepting other people. And that was like the worst. Like we had the worst sense of humor. Everything was just like kind of a mess, you know. And so now it's like they're just getting it right, you know. And they challenge us. It's really, it's like I have younger friends who are 21 because of the fashion that I'm in. And they really challenge me, like, even silly little things, I'll just say, oh, man, I hate myself. Like, you know, just something stupid. Like, you say something stupid, and then you think something stupid, you know, and they're just like, no, Tiffany, don't say that about yourself. Don't say something mean. You know, you're a wonderful person. And, like, one of my friends, Kenny, has said it enough that now it's in my head. I'm like, nope, don't say that. And I super appreciate them. They're, like, an amazing person. <laughs> so that's just a side bit. Yeah, honestly, like, I... It's funny because who was I talking to uh, that 
was, oh, they were struggling with uh, pronouns. They, they happen to live in Texas mm -hmm. and uh, they were struggling with the idea of, not the idea that people have different pronouns, but like how you know. And I was like, mm -hmm. you ask, asking is okay. And they were just kind of like blown away by that. And this is what I'm, I'm constantly telling my generation, like ask, just ask. Asking is like a superpower, y'all. All you have to do is just say, hey, um, what pronouns do you use? Yeah. Don't you know, and it can be scary at first. And it's not, you know, it's not sure. so bad after a while. You know, yeah, like, I mean, it's kind of like getting someone's name right. Same thing. Yeah. You know, you're not going to. You know, my name's Tiffany, but you think, oh, it's probably Tiffany or something like that. You're not just right. going to call me Tiffany for the rest of my life. You're going to say, hey, by the way, how do I pronounce your name? You know, although I, there's not usually any people who spell it differently, but whatever. And then I tell you it's Tiffany. So it's the same thing. Right. And then you're going to be motivated, like, you know what, let me pronounce her name correctly. Same thing with pronouns. You know, just consider them as other names. You know, it's yeah. like my name is Tiffany. It's also she and it's also they. You know, like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I think, you know, I mean, I... I think it became embarrassing on some level. I don't know when. I'm sure, I, I know when I was a child asking a question or at least a teen asking a question would be considered embarrassing if you just didn't know. Um, and I, I'm constantly saying, there's no way you would know if you didn't ask. Like this generation, they want you to ask. They're They're asking you to ask. Like they would like it. So- I mean, I would think pretty much across the board, if you have a, like a legit question, it doesn't hurt to ask them, especially if your motives are genuine um, and you have a relationship with them. I, I, it's not a problem to ask, but um, I know that's, you know, kind of a new thinking like, Oh, I would just ask them. I wouldn't assume that I know their pronouns. Uh, no. And then you get it wrong and there's awkwardness on both sides. You, if you're at least a somewhat decent person, are going to feel bad for misgendering someone. And they now have the, the double thing of correcting you, which is hard to do, or deciding not to correct you. And if they do correct you, they have to give you the, oh, no, it's okay. It's fine. It's and it's like, you know, they don't want you to feel bad. And so the cool thing is, you know, if you do get it wrong, just say, sorry, and then get it right. You don't need to go, oh, my God, blah, 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 blah. none of that. None of the, like, the word vomit. I know that you're tempted to do it. I was tempted to do it and have done it quite a few times. But it just makes it worse for both people. Just be like, sorry, fix it, move on. Oh, gosh. And if you keep yes. doing uh, it, then that's uh, a different story. You know, having, don't keep doing having a child that, you know, um, well, I'm recently non-binary, but, you know, one of my children being trans, like, uh, that took a minute, you know, to get the the pronouns correctly. And, you know, it's very tempting when you mess up or if you mess up in public even worse you know because then you're very yeah. tempted to go oh, i'm so sorry i'm so sorry you know it just makes it worse because then they're they feel awkward having to make you okay with something that you did to them so yeah. now it's you know this weird dynamic of and i think you know one of the harder things is um if you're talking about them in the past that that can be a little tricky because you're trying like you know, he was wearing his big poofy skirt and his big pink bow, you know, like you have to like yeah. think, but so sometimes I still mess that up, you know, because I'm, I'm in a, in a flow and then yeah. you have to just correct, just correct it yeah. and move on. Or if sometimes, uh, with my non-binary child, um, I will just call them by the wrong gender and you know in the middle of maybe a paragraph of something you know uh and then think back like oh no i'm sorry they they but then move on that's it yeah that's it yeah and like one of the biggest things parents tend to do is you know let's say if this person and you know was your daughter before they're not your daughter now and like you say a kid you know and people have a hard time not being like okay well my daughter's non-binary it's like no no, no your kid's non-binary Things yeah. like that. And a good way to practice for, you know, pr uh, previous pronouns or previous identities, think of it as like Elliot Page. Elliot Page uses he, him, at least as far as I know currently. And, you know, but Elliot Page played a character, Juno, who is a woman. And so it's just like, it's okay to talk about Elliot Page's previous character, 
but that's his character you know things mm-hmm. like that yeah. so you yeah. know that was a big one because I know a lot of people had trouble with that you know because they're like well back then he was a no 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 what is he now you know like that so well my my kids do tell they were always a he and so that helps he was always a he we just didn't know that he was a he um so that's why we correct ourselves in the past um and that just kind of helps like at least that's how we do it everybody's a little different but um yeah oh for sure um okay uh, let's move on. Let's have another question. Um, I'll get a little quirky. Uh, yeah. Quirky questions. Quirky. I don't think he's terribly quirky, but you know, it's probably not. It's probably pretty tame. Oh, I'll <laughs> ask. I'll ask. Uh, uh, the, the um, uh, Beth and and Darby's favorite quirky question. Okay, oh, I'm sure it. that you've probably been asked this already, but we'll we'll do it for for the for the folks at home. Um, so if you could fight a horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses, what would you do and why? Okay, so I have answered this, and it's the same mm. answer. Okay, <laughs> horses are terrifying in person. I'm sorry. I don't know if you've ever seen one, and I know they're beautiful, but they're taller than me, which scares me. So, so pretty much I would rather tiny little duck sized horses running around me because like, A, I could totally kick them. I mean, I feel bad, <laughs> but like, and, you know, but like something that big that I'm terrified of, what am I going to do? I'm just going to like, you know, hug it to death. Like, I don't know, not, not that I have to kill it, but you know, I'm going to hug it. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah, I, I was asked this before and apparently famously out of nowhere I went nay and like they all thought it was really funny (laughs) see there you go my terrible horse impressions I was not a horse girl growing up it was terrible (laughs) well my my one of my my oldest son uh was bit by a horse in Uganda Mm. um he wasn't doing anything he was just kind of standing there and he was a, a decent bit away I was a horse person growing up i had a horse um i knew that he was a safe distance away but the horse like took two steps forward and bit him on the stomach um so we tease him about that like i mean now it's funny at the time it was not funny it wasn't funny He he had literal like teeth like horse teeth marks in his stomach um poor kid they must eat grass like but Yeah, was wow. like lit, but like it was like like two C shapes. Like uh, it was so bad, a poor kid. So his is always yeah. the the horse sized duck. Always, always. Well, if, that was, <laughs> well, if he had like some kind of permanent like you know scar from that, that's quite the story. I would lie yeah. and be like, no, I was bit by a lion. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't fly so much, just because I do have a a, a child who uh, works in an exotic animal sanctuary and does okay. actually come home with like. Like Ooh. what? What happened here? Oh, bobcats! I'm like no big deal. What? What? <laughs> what? Bobcats. No problem. You know. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's see. Um. If you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Takoyaki. Okay. Well, let me explain. <laughs> so takoyaki is a Japanese. Uh, it's like a snack food. Uh, kind of like you go to like a vendor on the street and they they make it for you and it's like these little uh, fried octopus balls and mm. they're just so good that and another one called okonomiyaki which is like pretty much a Japanese fried pancake uh, with like shredded vegetables and like meat in it um, you know it's it also feeds into like my whole anime thing so I was like let me try Japanese dishes and it happened to be like my favorite dish so absolutely the best thing ever. I could just eat that all day. Forget that fried food would destroy my stomach. Let's, you know, <laughs> let's make it happen. It's fine. <laughs> a good right. way to go. If you're going to yeah, go. You know, know, that's a great way to go. go. <laughs> um, if it was me, there was a place in Vegas um, that every time we go to Vegas, we just went to a board game. This last year, we went to a board game convention because we're geeky like that. And... Um, you know, we've gone a couple of times uh, to Vegas because it's not very far from here. It's a couple hours. And um, there's this place called Sushi Samba that uh, they make this. They call them, they call them taquitos, but they're really like mini tacos. 
Um, and they have um, uh, like uh, albacore, um, but it's like marinated raw albacore, but in this crunchy shell and this mango like salsa on top. And it's one of those things that when you put it in your mouth, oh, it's got this little smoky chipotle foam that you put on top. And the minute that you put it in your mouth, it's like a party. Like, have you ever seen Ratatouille where he's describing, like, the cheese and there's all the little boing, boing. I've never actually watched it, but I saw that scene. The scene! Okay, so, yeah. like, it's like, boing, boing. That's the only time in my life, and I'm I tend to be kind of a foodie, but like the only time in my life that I really like really and we've taken people there and we're like, eat this. And then we watch because because everybody does it. Everybody goes, Oh, oh, oh wow. Wow, that's good. We're like, yes, <laughs> see, best thing I've ever I could eat that every day. Oh, I love it. Little party in my mouth. I'm all over that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, there's probably some, like, you know, more actual food food. But if you're going to ask me the top of my head, it's going to be my junk food option. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I oh, mean, someone said taiyaki. That's good, too. <laughs> if it had to be food food, I would just be, like, tacos. Because, you know, you can... tacos for Pizza. Anything. Pizza. I'm in New Pizza. York. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're in New York. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's not not it's... from here in Tennessee. They try, but you got to get it from New York. <laughs> you got to get it from New York. Um, yeah. If you could have coffee with any historical figure, a uh, living or dead, who would you choose? Oh my gosh, there's too many. Uh, living, living, probably because I'm terrible with history. Don't ask me about history. I mean, just like <laughs> I know, historical I know, just being general. a famous person. Yeah, 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 famous person or anything like that. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, it's going to automatically be someone who's currently living because I can't think. Um, right now, I think I would want to meet with Lizzo. For a few reasons. I also play the flute. I really respect her in a lot of ways and what she's doing for not just like, you know, general queer community, but she's also doing it for like, you know, plus size community. Um, and I think she's just like a really chill person. <laughs> so I think it'd be a lot of fun and I'd probably convince her to be my friend. A second person I'm going to give to uh, Naomi Watanabe. She is a Japanese uh, comedian. She actually moved to America. She does have some things and, and movies. She's been in American uh, film, but she. She's really, really funny and I'd probably have a terrible conversation if she doesn't speak enough English because uh, my Japanese isn't that good. But I really love her and I passed by her in New York City and I screamed her name and she turned around and I froze. And so I didn't ask for a photo. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to recreate that and get a photo with her. And <laughs> yeah. I, uh, oh, um, my husband told me that Lizzo just did um, you know that show where they eat the hot wings and they have to answer questions? Oh, no. That's so great. you should check it out because I I'm will check it out to you. But um, apparently there's a show where they have like um, lightest to hottest and they, um, you know, like the, the, this is mild and then they ask them a question and they're like, mm, okay, and they answer. And then it goes hotter, hotter, hotter and they have to keep answering questions. Um, it's 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 good. Yeah recreate um, that and someone said yeah i live in tennessee currently i moved here for my husband's a doctor and he had his uh, residency here so we moved here um a few years ago and then we're moving to north carolina so i get to see the country it's exciting hot ones that's it hot that's ones. Called? okay i'm gonna check that's it out hot called. ones look for lizzo yeah Got it. yeah my my favorite one is what's his name the kid who plays spider-man um, um not andrew garfield i'm behind no, on the no. spider-man um, <laughs> Um, Tom, um, not Hill, 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 no, that's somebody else. No, uh, what's 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 who's the, the guy? Spider Man. Spider Man. I, I like my poor knows. my poor brain. It just went. <laughs> Tom Holland. I was in Hill. Tom Holland. That's it. Yeah, the one with Tom yeah. Holland is amazing. Like after yeah. you watch the Lizzo one, then watch okay, the Tom. I'm gonna watch that. He's, He's adorable, adorable, and I love him and Zendaya together. If they're currently I love together, it. oh, I know, I know, my heart, like I love it so much. Yeah. Um, if I could call her someone, I would meet Jim Henson. I know he's not like a major historical thing, but um, what a creative genius that we lost when we lost Jim Henson. Um, because honestly, so good and so much to offer for our community too as a whole. Um, let's mm -hmm. see. Also, check out the Tom Holland lip sync battle. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
yeah, there's a lip sync in that out. opening. It's pretty good. So that's fun. Okay. Yeah. Um, there we go. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, okay. Here's oh, Terry lives in Tennessee too. Oh, oh awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm in <an> East Side. <laughs> that's awesome. So, okay. So here's a good one. What okay. would the title of a book about you be called if oh it was written by an enemy? Oh my gosh. Uh, all the ways that Tiffany has said and done the wrong things to later realize <laughs> that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Or no, not even that. No, I haven't, I haven't historically said a lot of bad things, honestly. Um, but you know, Chronicles of a person who has arguments with themselves in the shower. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> Spoken like a writer, like, like right there, like boom. I would have. When no I idea found out other person. people do that, I thought it was just a me thing. And then people, you know, people are more honest now and they write about it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I literally am like recreating an argument that never happened, fighting with myself, telling myself all the ways that I should have done something better. <laughs> and now I'm stressed. Now I'm upset. And I'm just trying to take a shower. <laughs> just need I gotta to get to work. <laughs> All right. So Good on stuff. to a few uh, like expert kind of questions, like um, you know, more more serious questions, more serious. Yeah. Um. What is a skill that you think everyone should know how to do? Ooh, good ones. Okay. Uh, relationship skills. Uh, so I happen to uh, be polyamorous. And so like part of that is like deconstructing a lot of the things you were taught about relationships. Sure. And, you know, I'm not saying everybody has to like come to the side of polyamory, but I'm just saying that part of it is realizing what you do in relationships. You create these scripts, you know, that everyone's oh, supposed yes. to follow. Like I am this kind of friend. You are going to do this for me. And the other person may not be receiving of that. It's actually not even consensual. You're expecting them to like become or even partners. It, can, it doesn't have to just be your friends. It could be your partners. It could be your parents. Everybody has scripts for each other. And sure. it's, it's horrifying because you don't fit into that. And then you fight about it. You know, so one of the biggest things I would say everybody needs to do is like do reading on like relationships, creating secure bonds with other people. Uh, a lot of the books happen to also coincide with polyamory, but there's also books that are just for relationships in general. And remembering that friendships are relationships too. Everything is a relationship with another person and learning that. And it's going to help you on your job. It's going to help you like anywhere with, with friends, with, with partners, because you're going to realize like, what have I been doing? How have I been forcing this person to fit into a box? And you learn to just show up as yourself and let other people show up as themselves. And then together you create a better bond. And I'm telling you, it is life changing. So awesome. just just do it. Like I like I keep saying, I tell my kids this all the time that 90% of the world's problems are relationship. If 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 you could solve the relationship aspect, you would solve 90% of the problems. It's just people not knowing how to communicate. Um, and yeah. yeah, no, that is that is absolutely um what is your favorite productivity hack Ooh, so i'm not that great at productivity because adhd mm -hmm. but um i think for me um i i used to make lists of everything and then forget that i made a list so i'd make a list for the list doesn't work okay for me i need physical representation of the thing that i need to do next so if let's say if i'm going to a doctor's appointment and i need to bring some paperwork that paperwork, put it next to my purse because I'm going to go out, the purse is on the table. I'm going to grab those two things along with my keys. If I have assignments to do at work, you know, they're more like, uh, they're more like online. Like I do a lot of emailing. Um, mm -hmm. So instead, I open up separate windows for each email I need to send and have them. And until they're gone, it's there. It's in my way. It's, it's oh, there. You know, so physical, somehow physically remind yourself to do something. And it makes it a lot easier to get it done. And same with laundry. Uh, I also enjoy being a little messy. Put it in your way. If you have to get it done, if you have no underwear left, put the laundry in your way so you're passing by it constantly. It's going to force you to do it. It's like, okay, let me just do it. You know, things like that. So it really, really helps. Although it might drive your partner and family crazy. Um, make sure they're on board and understand <laughs> and have some kind of like compromise on it. I have, okay, I have three. I have three. 
Uh, one is, this is a tip that we used for um, my kids when they were homeschooling um, because, you know, living in Africa, uh, homeschooling was a thing. And um, so what we would do, and a little example here, um, like, okay, I'll just take these. So they would have this, let's say we're reading this, right? Um, and so what they would do is we would put like little Skittles or something on this. And once you read all of this, then you could have the candy, right? So oh. you had to read this much to get it. So it would be like one M&M or one Skittle, right? So that you would have to get through this whole length of text and then you could have your Skittle or popcorn or cheese it you know whatever your treat is and oh, that way we that. get a lot of reading done because um my kids are very food motivated <laughs> um so there's one there's how to get some reading done when you're not wanting to read the boring stuff um the other is for like parenting don't okay. when you have little kids and coming from a mom you know person with five little ones at one point um the best thing to do is to not create the problem in the first place. So before you put mm. something down, anytime you put anything down, you need to ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen if my child or cat or whatever gets into this? What's the worst that could happen? And then make a choice do you want to leave it here or do you want to move it? Um, yeah. I can't tell you how many parents I've known that have had to change their bed sheets or had to change, you know, cause their kid got into their purse, which had their lipstick, which got all over the walls, which got all over, you know, look before you set anything down, just know that ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen here? <laughs> yeah, that's when you're blaming nature. the kid for a situation that you essentially created. You know, like, okay, you definitely, then, you know, don't leave definitely. the puzzle pieces out for them to, you know, like, <laughs> I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the third one, I forgot. So. Oh, no. If you think about it, you're free to stop me and be like, no, I thought about it. I thought about it. Yeah. I don't remember. Oh, we'll just move on. Um, let's see. Uh, um, 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 um what occupation would you like to try? Mm, like you had oh, all yeah. the time, all the resources, just try. A hundred percent. And I will definitely do it eventually. Um, you know, I want to be like a full-time writer and just like, as much as I like being a scientist, I want to close the door in that chapter of my life and just be like a full-time writer, you know, regardless of like, you know, I'm not saying I have to be a billionaire and, you know, be the next, uh, you know, writer of some cool series. But I would like to write something that, you know, people read and they feel something, which apparently I did do that, which is cool. But like, you know, in a book, like I'd love to write like a novel and, and like people just feel something, po preferably positive, um, but, you know, something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the beggars can't be choosers, but I'll I mean, you know, like I can write a sad book and people can cry and like, and they yeah, can reflect. But like, you know, I want it to be generally a positive experience. <laughs> So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I also wanted to be a mom, but that's happening soon anyway, regardless of how I feel about that now. <laughs> so, yes. No, I'm, I'm very happy about it. It's, it was very much planned, but even so, it's still terrifying. So <laughs> it is. You have that moment where uh, you and the husband get home with the baby and you look at each other and everybody's gone, you know, once everybody leaves and yeah. and stuff and it's just you and the, the baby and you're like, who's going to come take this baby? Like, they gave us a baby? Keep this little being alive? What? <laughs> they let us leave the hospital with this baby? And it's funny because like my sister-in-law was the type to like always check that my niece was like breathing and everything. And I'm like, mm. that is a hundred percent who I'm going to be. Hello, looking at a mirror. Like it was, I was like, oh, thank goodness. I'm not the only one who's like this. So, yes. We'll see. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's funny. Um, my husband had this grand plan that he said, you know, you'll be up all night looking at the baby and stuff. And I was breastfeeding, you know, 23 years ago. And, uh, 
you know, he said, look, we'll put the bassinet on my side of the bed. And that way, when the baby wakes up, I'll hand the baby to you. And then, you know, <laughs> you'll, you'll get some sleep. And I'm like, okay, great. So I, first night that we're home, baby's crying, baby's crying. I'm waking him up. Sean, 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 baby. Huh? Sean, baby. Oh, oh, okay. Hands me the baby. So I, Sean, here, take the baby. The baby's done eating. Here, take the baby. And, oh, okay. And then baby's crying. Sean, Sean, Sean. It's just like. But just, just bring it over here. <laughs> just bring it over yeah, I was the second you said that, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Just, I'm here. I'm going to pass your child so you can do the thing. It's not like you can sleep while they're feeding. Hopefully, yeah. I have no idea how it works yet. So you I can't can. You can. It's a, a, you can. A bit, okay. Yeah, a little bit later. I don't know if when they're not, little, not it might be first, dangerous. A little bit later. You, yeah, later. Figure it out. But um, oh, oh, here, here's a good tip. Here's a, here's a parenting tip. Um, oh, go for it. And this was passed on to me by a wise woman, and I highly recommend this, okay? Um, when you uh, have your baby, uh, the very first time when the baby needs a bath, and that's, you know, you figure that out with the with the doctor and all that, they usually, after the, the little cord thing falls off or whatever, the very first, yeah. like, actual bath when you're at home. You get up, you get your husband, gets all the stuff together, right, for the bath. Set up the camera so that it's all documented on film and leave. Leave. Do not hover. Do not hover over your husband as he gives this baby a bath. Let him do it. Let him do it. He doesn't need you to... Tell him how to do it. The baby is not going to fall into the bathtub and, and, and vanish. Like, I promise, like, he, it will all be okay. You go take a bath. And that's what I did. And you know what? Um, it gave him a, a confidence with our kids because he was the one that did the bath. I had no idea. I, you know, I, and, and even like, you know, he would come home and that was his thing. He'd give them all a bath, you know, everybody in the pool, everybody out of the pool, you know, whatever. So that's my tip for parenting because hello <gasps> y'all can i wait, wait, wait. come here come here come here come here so i'm live <laughs> i'm live so this here's zoe hello say hi hello. to everybody this is hi. tiffany hi. um i highly recommend someday your child uh work at starbucks <laughs> right bring you a starbucks on the way home um oh, it's best. great hey <laughs> hey do you have time to give everybody a quick for free animal uh, fact. For free animal fact. Ooh, for free go. animal fact. But you have to come in and see because there you go. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, all right. So this is not scientific at all. Uh, I don't know how well you can hear me. You can hear. They can, can hear, hear you just fine. Yeah. Uh, we at the sanctuary we worked at, we had a parrot named Pedro. All right. And with the name Pedro... We all refer to him with he, him pronouns. Now, with birds, it's very hard to tell if they're a girl or a boy. So one day Pedro went to the vet. Turns out Pedro's a girl, right? We then switch over to uh, she, her pronouns. Immediately turns into the meanest bird ever. <laughs> like, a, like a flip on the switch. All right? So we're like, huh, Pedro's trans. All right, great. <laughs> Back to he, him pronouns, and was just once again a lovely, a lovely bird. No idea how, you know, scientific that is in any way, shape, or form. It's not. Just. just it worked for you, It though. worked. Yeah. It worked. Don't know how. Don't know why. Just did. So, pa- we, pa- we, Pedro was, was trans. Pedro, trans. Hmm, trans I love pa- it. <laughs> hey. And they get little attitudes, too. Bye. 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 <laughs> Yeah, birds so, are great. My friend has a bird, and uh, actually, a bird named Zoe, and she has a little attitude. It's cute. <laughs> yeah, they. Um, uh, I'm told that we took friends down to the sanctuary, and uh, the ravens were. Um, you know, Zoe was giving us the tour, walking us around, and the ravens who start, who are in an enclosure, right? Because they they have injuries mm-hmm. and things they can't they can't be released. So uh, you hear them going, ow, ow, ow. 
And I'm like, Zoe, what is going on? She's like, they're making fun of me. And I'm like, wait, what? They know I'm coming. They can hear me that I'm coming and they're making fun of us because whenever we go in there to clean the cage, they, they, they bite us and we say, ow. And so now if they want to get fed there. They, they yell out. Ow, ow. Apparently oh, there's funny. a baby. Uh, there's a baby. There's a bird that sounds just like a baby crying, like a, like an actual baby cry. Uh, so they, they have lots of fun there at the sanctuary. There's always something. Oh, that's on. cute. Yeah, like goats, mm. they always sound like babies when they cry. It's pretty funny. Ooh. Or like people screaming. One or the other. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah. Well, if you've seen, uh, if you've seen Thor, Love and Thunder. Have you seen Thor? And no, Love I haven't. Thunder? I'm so behind. Oh, must. It's so great. I must. You'll know. Okay. Later, later when you see it, you'll go, oh yeah, that's fine. I'll so. know. I'm going to watch it and be like, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, um, this was super fun. I'm I'm super glad yeah. that you're on board, and I can't wait to create awesome stuff with you. Um, let's. Uh, does Does anybody um, have anything they want to ask? Or I know we've been trying to kind of keep an eye on things. Yeah. Does anybody have something they want to ask or say before we wind things up? For oh, we oh, should I'm talk about. Um, we want to move over to YouTube. Yes. So everyone be kind of looking at that because we very much would like to move over uh, to YouTube to be um, where we do our reflections. Um, it's going to be easier for um, inclusivity for our um, hearing impaired folks because we can um, do some transcription. We have somebody who's going to transcribe um, and hopefully can transcribe live. So yeah. that's super good news. So we really want that. So um, in order for that to happen, more than likely, we, are, we will be moving over to YouTube for that. And then that way you can see, oh, here's one. If you were an ice cream or sorbet flavor, what would you be and why? <laughs> My answer is going to be in the pink flavor, whether it's strawberry or, or if it's raspberry, just the pink flavor. <laughs> Watermelon. <laughs> I want to pretend like I care about one of them in particular, but I just picked the pink one. Yeah, you just care about the color. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I can't eat ice cream because I'm lactose intolerant, but there is cashew milk ice cream, which is very good if you're lactose intolerant. It tastes better than any other milk ice cream. What about or, sorbet? Like raspberry sorbet? Yeah, sorbet I can do. Then it's raspberry, you know, strawberry, any of those. I feel like raspberry would be like a darker pink, so it would be like more yeah. like a watermelon or strawberry. Sorbet. Yeah, watermelon's the perfect shade of pink, but then strawberry feels like you can actually find that. Yeah, yeah, it's more and more yeah. available. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think that's it for today. I think we will wind yeah. it up and uh, call it a day, but thank you all for being here. We are going to be next week. We'll announce it if we're going to move over to YouTube at 6.30. Regardless, it's 6.30 on Saturday. Um, is the watermelon with the candy seeds in it? Oh, because they have the little uh, chocolate. Can you have chocolate? Yeah, I've seen those. Uh, yeah, I, well, I mean, I'll eat it, but it's not. I don't really like chocolate that much, though. Not your I don't favorite. Know why. Yeah, I don't know. I, I used to pretend I liked it, but I don't think I like it. <laughs> so. <laughs> funny how you just gotta like, fit in right <laughs> yeah you, you want to fit, fit in. in people like chocolate so yeah awesome. oh it's All not right, chocolate well. it's just seeds oh, oh well there you go okay well <laughs> thanks folks for coming as always love and light love and light yeah love and See light bye. bye take care i have to figure out how to turn this off oh no oh i found it alright bye y'all no i didn't <laughs> All right, here. Okay, bye.